with, uh, let's see where we are. So where, where have we been? So our first session was that visual aids aid learning. Um, we had, we talked about three-dimensional three -dimensional visual aids. <laughs> um, we talked about dioramas and objects. Um, and we also talked about the basic visual aid, which is a flip chart. And we talked about all the variations there are that you can do with flip charts. We didn't cover it all. I'm sure there's all kinds of stuff we didn't think about. Our next session was hook them and keep them. How do we hook them? We teach from the known to the unknown because we want them to have a place to hang their hat. We want them to have all the cogs and wheels in place so we can get from what teacher's teaching to the child over here. The categories we use were food that teaches a lesson. We talked about pictures and visuals uh, that teach a lesson. And we talked about activities beyond sitting in a chair. That was those three posters over there, the orange, green, and yellow. They're not just sitting, they're active in their chair while they're doing something. Uh, then we talked about objects that spur curiosity to enhance the child. It was these things, things that we might have laid out before class that grab their attention and make them get them excited about what is to come. So in this one, our, our session is called Spice It Up. We want to give something to children so something so delicious in Bible class that they that they just keep wanting more because it's just so good. How do we do that? Well, uh, we're going to look at some uh, two-dimensional letter, letter two-dimensional visual aids. Letters, we're going to do numbers, we're going to do something I call draw and tell, and then we're going to get into the oversize or the life-size visual aids. So let's begin that session, uh, number three here, spice it up. So if I make a, an Italian dish for my family, all I really need is chicken or beef, some, some pasta, tomatoes, some cheese, and we're good to go, right? We've got a nutritious meal that will feed a family. But if I throw in a little basil, maybe some parsley, some salt and pepper, what have I just done to that delicious, nutritious meal? I think I've spiced it up a little, but I've made it so that we may want more. So in Bible class, um, we want to spice up our lessons a little bit. And I don't mean that God's word needs anything uh, added to it. That's not what I mean. So don't misunderstand me. God's word in and of itself is there. But how do you take God's word and make it palatable for children so that they want more? So that's what I mean when I say spice it up. So we're going to talk about letters and then numbers first. So over here with Elijah, um, everybody knows how to do Wheel of Fortune, right? Everybody plays Wheel of Fortune. So I have the word prophet and Elijah. Um, that I'm going to be displaying. In your packet there, I gave you the actual script that I use when I teach this lesson to upper elementary. We're not going to use that script to teach the lower children in lower elementary. So I put some lines on the wall, some construction paper lines on the wall. And then slowly you see my my script back there, I, I, I number these in, in order. And then I put one letter at a time in random order for these two words that will eventually spell Prophet Elijah. And I'm teaching the story about Elijah and, and the raven, ravens. So we go through it and when, and I ask the kids, I never say, I never say Prophet and I never say Elijah. I ask the kids, who am I talking about? Who am I talking about? Who is this man? And you'll see that question repeated over and over. Remember, we talked about repeating phrases over and over. Mm -hmm. so I kind of use that concept in this. Um, who is this man? What is his name? And we continue putting one word at a time. That's fine for upper elementary children. Now, I say, if you figure it out, don't scream it out. Just raise your hand and say, I know who it is. I'll say, great. Don't say anything. Don't tell anybody. Keep it quiet. So I keep them engaged by keeping them wondering. Now, how do you adapt this for little ones? You're not going to do that lesson the way it is right there because it's two words. They're long. You're not going to do it. You, you're doing things in random order. Um, if you're doing the third and fourth graders, you might just have the name Elijah up there. They might figure it out before you finish. Maybe not. 
But with even third and fourth graders, you could put these in random order. You wouldn't have to put them in actual order. If you're teaching first and second grade, you could put these in order and put another one. So you're giving them a little bit more of a visual clue because you'll have readers in first and second grade who might be able to figure out what it is. Don't expect them to hold it to themselves because they're not going to. They will blurt it out as soon as they know. Um, so this is another idea that's adaptable. I do it. Uh, for teaching a lesson on Noah. I, how did Noah build the ark? In what way did he build it? Well, he, the word that he, and as I'm you see the facts on there, it had one opening or one window, 300 cubits long. So as you're teaching, you're putting these up there randomly. You can put whatever you want on these. These are not fancy. Um, I think I gave you the pattern from this. I don't remember. I don't have the book anymore, it's called Ray, it's not in print. But I gave you guys this, so you can just kind of see how to do it. Um, it's not, notice there's no pictures on there. Um, notice on Elijah, Prophet Elijah, I put pictures on there because it was longer. Um, oh, I, you know what, I actually did a video with this. Um, during COVID, uh, our congregation did some videos. I did 16 videos just for elementary ages. Um, if you go to Bear Valley Church of Christ, it's, it's Bear Valley's in Denver. I, I'm from Denver, in case nobody knows. Um, um, and go to YouTube, Bear Valley Church of Christ on YouTube, you'll be able to see uh, videos. I looked at the elementary ages. Um, the prophet Elijah was on there. That was the first one I did. We were trying to figure out what in the world we were doing. Um, but, but it's kind of a long lesson. Um, but you can make it shorter. But exactly, it's the same thing. Put them in random order. Don't do this kind of thing all the time because the children get tired of it. These are the kinds of things. These are actually flip charts. This is actually a flip chart, but it's a variation on a flip chart, isn't it? Everything you see up here is flip charts. It's just not flipping them around, okay? So that's Prophet Elijah. That is actually on my website, too. I went ahead and put the lesson plan, I think, on there. But that's uh, that's Prophet Elijah and uh, the word exactly. Uh, let's see. Oh, the gospel letters. We were just talking before y'all came in that what's behind this flannel is one of those drip pans you put under your car that leaks oil and stuff in your driveway. It's metal. Um, during COVID, I... I was doing these lessons from home. See the, the uh, Velcro on the back? I had it Velcroed in my, my Bible classroom. I needed a, a wall, a place to display something, display something while I was teaching from home in my kitchen. <laughs> so I had this drip pan and I thought, oh, I can, I can do that. So I covered it with flannel and I had a new idea was born. I thought, well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it's, it's magnetic, it's uh, flannel. Um, you can change it, just spray glue, put the flannel on. Um, it's hard to describe how to do this lesson. I start, and, and if there's a video with this on there. Um, I start about talking about how colors remind me of things. The color of white reminds me of snow, uh, water for blue, red heart, maybe blood grass and so forth. Um, shapes make me think of things. What do all these shapes all <laughs> what do all these shapes all together make you think of? Oh, oh. yeah so shapes make us think of things, colors. Um, what does this make you think of? The shape? Halloween. Pumpkin. 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 And of course we have green? What if we have red? What does this make you think of? Blah, blah, blah. Gold makes me think of this, blah, blah, blah. So I teach the lesson, and the first thing I do is put up um, individual in the squares of color on there as I'm teaching the story of, this is the story of Adam and Eve's sin. I put up individual squares as I go through their story. And then at the end, I replace the, the squares with this, because we talked about how in the beginning Adam and Eve were pure, but then they sinned. Well, much, much later, 
I forget how I did it, but this is the blood of Christ, this is baptism, this is continuing to grow, this is heaven. But the colors, it's a denominational idea called the gospel and colors, but of course we're not going to teach it the way it did, but they do. So um, I taught it the way the Bible says. Mm -hmm. But it's a fun way to use letters. We've got our letters over here. Um, questions on that? Um, BibleFunForKids.com. She has a bunch of these, a bunch of the names. This is this is the life of David. So she has pictures. All you have to do is print these out. If you're studying the life of David, just put this on the wall. This can be your review each week. We can talk about all the different events in David's life. I went ahead and put flannel on it. And then I can stick it on um, on flannel. So everything is adaptable, right, ladies? Everything is adaptable. We don't have to do something a certain way just because that's the way it's done. We can always adapt and, and use things, and we should. All the things I'm telling you are not going to work for you. You're going to have to find your own ways to, to adapt it and make it work for you. Um, so BibleFunForKids.com bunch of those. Jesus, Moses, Joshua. Oh, she has a bunch of them. The beauty of her website, I tell you, she's the most prolific person <laughs> I, I'm aware of in, in the Lord's Church. She is, well, she is hands-on Bible teacher. Yeah, very, very prolific. Um, but they've got a lot of stuff. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. Go to their website, spend time on there. Spend time on there tomorrow and the next day. Find out what they've got, print it off, laminate it, file it properly, and it'll last you for years. All right? All right, so let's, let's so that's uh, letters. Let's go to numbers. So now we're going to talk about the plays. Let me see up here. This is where we are. Okay, the burning bush and the plays. Somebody asked about the plays. Was I going to uh, talk about those? I obviously didn't bring them all. They're just too big. Here's one through nine. Um, so I brought number five because he's, well, he's dead. So I mean, why not? <laughs> We're not going to make him sitting up. Uh, look what's above the place. Those are these gods over here that we talked about. And perhaps God was aiming in the people's minds to go after Osiris because her bloodstream, the Nile was her bloodstream, and so forth. Um, some of them are just kind of kind of make it up. I don't I don't know if this is a God or not, but it doesn't matter. There were so many of them. We're bound to make some of them. Um, but these are big. I made these out of a single sheet of poster board. Um, they're they're big, and I I do I use these for storage at home. I've got 10 or 12 of these. They just sit up against the wall, and I store some of these big things. They don't take up a lot of foot space, but they it's, it's an art portfolio, but it can store these. And then over here, over here at number 10, do you see the zero? It's got, it's a door, and you've got the, the, the blood on the lintel and the doorpost, and then, of course, the guy's dead because he didn't have that on his doorpost. Um, and then we, we, I always make sure they have the connections between the gods of, of Israel and what God was trying to do, uh, what message he was trying to get across. Exodus 12, 12 says, he's talking about the final plague. For I will go through the land of Egypt on that night um, and will strike down all who are born in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Israel, against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. So in case in the people's mind he forgot a god, <laughs> then get them all with killing the firstborn. And of course, Pharaoh was a god. Um, it's important that the kids know that because this is a piece of history, but we want to plug it into the theological history of the Bible. Do you see how we've done that? So there's also a good song for the 10 plagues. Am I doing it now or am I doing it later? I think I'm doing it later. So we'll get to a good song for the 10 plagues. What story um, are these numbers? Yeah, what are these numbers over here? What do they represent? What are these numbers over here? Anybody take a guess? When I tell you, you're going to go, oh, of course. What? Ten commandments. Ten commandments. 
You shall have no other gods before me. Don't make any graven in images. Um, don't take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Remember the Sabbath. Now, this came with a number four and a cross sort of superimposed on it. And I was like, wait, wait a minute. <clears throat> they are not the same. The denominational world tries to make remember the Sabbath and and the Lord's Day the same. They are completely different days with completely different reasons. God executed or, or executed began incorporated the uh, the Sabbath day on day seven of creation. He blessed it and he made it holy. When Jesus came, he made a different day holy. So I put this as a calendar: Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I completely remade this. This is Daniel's Place. Dot com. It's on your, it's on your resources. You have to pay for this. It's two dollars. This is not something I could copy and give out to you, um, because because it's a copyright thing. Here's uh, number five. Um, I like using magnets on these because you can do this. And what is this one? Do not murder. Oh. Do not murder. And what's this one? Uh, do not commit adultery. And of course, this, there's a pair of handcuffs there. <laughs> Don't steal. Uh, Don't steal. 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 And then we have uh, um, Don't bear Cut. false. Don't bear false, bear false, false, false witness. Yeah. yeah. Don't bear, Don't. And then uh, this no. is. Don't cut it. That's cute. Uh, that I've never seen anything on the Ten Commandments except for this, and you have to change this. Danielsplace.com, uh, Ten Commandments numbers or something. She's got a lot of really good stuff. What I did, I paid for a month or two. Um, because you can do a subscription or, or a year or something. And I went and I got as much as I could. And then I didn't, and then when my subscription ran out, I didn't uh, do it anymore. But it's a denominational website. Okay. And she's got great stuff. But she's got great stuff. She, he, they, I'm not sure who they are. Uh, but yeah, it's got great stuff. Um, okay, here's something. How many are familiar with BibleClassWorkshop.com? That's another one you need to know about. Bible, it's on your it's on your sheet. It's on your uh, resource page. They have so many good materials, and they are very, very, very inexpensive. This is seven ways to remember. Um, it's a song. I'll sing it. I, I, I this is copyrighted, so I couldn't give it to you. But um, it's to the tune of "I Have Decided to Follow Jesus." There was one cross where Jesus died. There were two thieves hung by his side. They wrote in three tongues, the king of Jews. There were four guards, his clothes to choose. He had five wounds, hands, feet, and side. He's, he hung six hours. Before he died, he spoke seven times while he was there. We know he died, our sins to spare. Isn't that great? Oh, that is wonderful. And um, see, I don't have it on the back, so it's a little Which harder one? to do this <laughs> when I should be doing this. Which one? I'm sorry. They, huh? they were asking you for your website again. Oh, is her, oh my website. Right. You have a resource page, the very last two pages. Okay. It's kidsbibleclassideas.com. Okay. Okay. I still have so much to put on there. It's, I, I'm not a writer. I, I don't know. Um, I still have so much. Let me just write it up here. But patterns are on there. Oh, there are some patterns from this session. That you can get. You know, how much do the patterns run in peace? Do you Mine? know like those? These, this was two dollars. That's all. Uh, yeah, Danielle's place. Yeah. They're downloads. You just they're downloads. This maybe two dollars, maybe three. You can get them laminated or unlaminated, and it might cost you a dollar more. Um, very, That's very great. expensive. They have all kinds of applications on there. What website is that one? The song? This one is uh, BibleClassWorkshop.com. Look, look at it on your resource page. Okay. BibleClassWorkshop.com. 
those ladies do uh, do workshops too. They have wonderful materials, very, very inexpensive. Uh, what was the name of that song again? Oh, this is uh, Seven Ways to Remember. Okay. Since we're doing numbers, I want to do Seven Ways to Remember. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Excellent resource there. Um, Bible Books Library. I believe every Bible class teacher should have the Bible books on in their classroom somewhere 100% of the time. You need to have Old Testament and New Testament. There are a lot of sources online. There's lots of free downloads. Um, a a co-teacher of mine made these years ago, and there were, you know, mar marks a lot, and, but they were beautiful, so I had somebody digitize it for me. And this is the digitized version. You can download it free on my website. You just... Put in different, I just put different color, colors of paper for each of the divisions. You can have old and new. Put it in a permanent spot in your classroom. Get a pointer. Let the kids point. Um, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I can love to point I love to have the pointer. <laughs> can you sing the Old Testament song? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I'm trying to so get under, I can't, but I can't ever get the tune right for my kids. It's 10 little Indians. Yeah. I still can't do it. One little, two little, three little Indians. Yeah. Wait, just a minute. You don't. Right. <laughs> this is <laughs> important. This is one of the most important things here. Okay. okay. <laughs> Y'all sing with me. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1st and 2nd Samuel, 1st and 2nd Kings, 1st and 2nd Chronicles. Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Jonah, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggah, Zechariah, Malachi. Yeah, different variations. Doesn't really matter. Just sing the same thing all the time <laughs> with you. your kids. Um, I still have a hard time saying them all in order with that song because all my life I spoke them, and now I learn the song. Can't remember them half the time. Yeah, same I'm way. Opposite. Same way with. Uh, it has to be sung, otherwise I get confused. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's funny we learn them one way. Uh, we learn them one way. All right. Thank you. Uh, oh, we're talking. All right, so we have done <coughs> letters, numbers. Now let's do draw and tell. You have those in your packet too. I give the kids a blank piece of paper and then I ask them to fold it like a hot dog. See, a hot dog. Fold it like a hot dog. Get your big crease in there. Now, remember this is a blank piece of paper. Fold it like a hamburger. This is what they do in school. They, they tend to know. I don't know if that's the coolest thing. <laughs> I figured that out. Works. <laughs> it works. It works. It works. So now they have four spaces. So I, this is another one of those weird last minute ideas. I don't know what to do. I'll just draw it. I didn't even know what I was going to draw when I went in there, but it kind of came to me. This is this Jacob, when Jacob sold, or when Esau sold his birthright to Jacob. It's very, very simple, and you can do this with a lot of lessons. You don't have to be an artist. Kids don't care. They really don't care, but they get to draw their own. So up here, well, Jacob met Rachel, and he fell in love, so J plus R. There were two babies born, blah, blah, blah. One was hairy, so make it hairy all over. <laughs> make it really hairy. And then he was smooth. He was the hunter. He was the shepherd. And then this is just a fireplace with a pot of stew hanging on there with the word birthright. Um, I tell the kids, Stay with me while we tell it, and when, we get, when we're through, I'll give you a chance to go back and color it if you want or enhance it. Because some kids get really, really involved on this first thing, and then they're kind of stuck there while you're going while you're going on. So another one I, I do this with with success is a story of uh, Ehud when he uh, killed the big fat king egg lion. Um, I also do it when when Moses struck the rock. Any short story that doesn't involve a ton of characters necessarily or a ton would lend itself to this a lot. And I believe the lady at missionbibleclass.org has some something like this on there. But more, if you're looking for ideas, you know, really explore her, 
her website because she's got, got a lot of one. But the kids love this. It gets them involved. And in a child who's fully engaged is going to cause problems or not cause problems? No. Not. So we have to find ways to engage our children on their level, whether it's creating this expectation, this curiosity, whatever, we need to get them ready for what's to come. All right, now two-dimensional visual aids oversized. Is there anybody who does not know how to take a, a small picture and enlarge it? Is there anybody who doesn't know how to do that? Okay, super simple. And I'll bet somebody in your congregation can do it if you wouldn't have the, the materials to do so. If you have access to a PowerPoint projector or an overhead projector, remember the old overhead projectors with the transparencies? You scoot it closer if you want it smaller, and you scoot it farther away if you want it bigger. You see that? See what happens? Mm -hmm. And then all you have to do, uh, just do this on a on a flat wall. Take your take a piece of paper or whatever a fabric, whatever. Close take it on a wall. Back this up and scoot it closer, whatever. And then you can just trace on the wall. Trace on the wall. Um, somebody was just telling me, <laughs> tell them the story. <laughs> we put Pellon down. We were working at a lady's house. We put Pellon down and we were making a life size David and Goliath. Using markers. And using a magic marker on Pellon. We have half of David is indelibly on her dining room table oh. for eternity. <laughs> Put something under the <laughs> old plastic tablecloth yeah. or something. You know, if you're doing poster board on it, the wall, it's board not board. gonna yeah. not gonna yeah. leak through. But there are something called post uh, there is there's a specific marker that doesn't bleed through. I forgot what it's called. Um, that's what I use in my songs. It's um what it's called, but they're, they're markers that don't, we can get them in a, an office supply shop. They don't bleed through. If I showed you the other side of this paper, uh, you would just see a shadow. Some of them will grow but as time goes by. If you marks use a lot. Them. Marks a lot grows mm -hmm. um, and grows and it just kind of blurs. Over time, I've got some of those visuals. Oh, they're terrible. But Sharpies and whatever this is, so maybe I'll think about it. And uh, staples will blow them up to huge size, different sizes, even above poster board. If, but uh -huh, as long as it's not copyrighted, if it's copyrighted, they won't. But if it's something like comes just with no copyright on it, they'll blow it up. But it can get expensive unless your church is doing it like for a big thing. Yeah, and then we have the problem when things are big, if they're made out of paper. Storing. 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 Well, Tearing. not only storage, but tearing. Terry, yeah. that's why years ago, many of us started using Pellon. Mm -hmm. Pellon. So let's talk about these guys right here. You have the pattern for these guys uh, in there. Um, I make three of these. Oh, we'll, we'll come back to the burning bush. We won't forget that, I promise. No, maybe I should do it now before we get to it. We're still in, wait, we're still oh, in oversized. Oversize. <laughs> we're in oversized. All right, my burning bush is oversized. Okay. Um, these Velcro um, magnets. I have to see the magnets. These modern flat strip magnets are mm -hmm. just terrible. They don't. They don't work at all. So I moved to Velcro, transparent Velcro. Oh. Um, this is not transparent. Huh. I got these. They're super cheap uh, off Amazon. Hope ad hoc lop, but super cheap. But it came with a ton. But they're transparent. So you don't notice it on here all that much because it's not transparent, but this is white or black, but I use those exclusively. But this is for the story of Moses and the burning bush. Uh, again, I did a video of this. So if you go to Bear Valley Church of Christ YouTube, you can kind of see how to do it. Um, I designed this for upper elementary. This format, this lesson as it is, will need to be adapted if you've got kindergartners for, you know, the low, you're going to have to adapt it. Um, but I just made a tree and then I got some leaves and I just put on here, somebody digitized it for me, just a phrase. Mine, the one that I actually have is big. It was too big to bring. And on the back, I've got my my sayings, but Moses fell on his face when we put it up. Um, God's anger burned against Moses. I love that. Um, you can't see it on this teensy, teensy, tiny one, 
Um, but on this big one, his God's anger burned against mm -hmm. Moses. I wonder why God chose that the writer to use that word when he's talking about the burning bush. <laughs> I think it's comical. I don't know if that's the right <laughs> word, but God's anger, the, the anger of the Lord burned against Moses. As and then you put it up. So you tell the story and you put it up. Oh, mm -hmm. Halloween. <laughs> I was just yes, yeah, yeah, so I was just showing them that in the resource room. They were you have one. We have several because I go and wait. I keep an eye on them. I got mine for three dollars. They're normally about fifteen, but at Christmas you can get blue and clear, so you have water or you have a bright mm -hmm. light if you Around need it. And those, you can get, but the the, the fire and ice purple. ones you can get. Yeah. yeah. What other purple. stories can you use this fire for? Fire what other fire stories can fiery we use it for? Furnace. Huh? Fiery furnace. Fiery furnace. Yeah. That would be ideal for the fiery furnace, right? Jesus cooking breakfast on the beach because you can make paper logs. That's right. You can put this kind of in the middle and kind of around. Yeah, there's a lot of ways to use it. And all shipwreck. Yeah. You could use it on the fire when the snake. Yes. Yeah. Go. See, now you're thinking. Well, do you put that up there at the start <laughs> as you're adding, <laughs> or do you do no. it below? I, I wait until. Um, well, most of this is review. You know, Moses was any not not most of it, but a lot of my green is uh, review. Mm -hmm. What we what we've already what done, we're... and then he saw the bush, and it it was fire burning. Mm -hmm. I need to start. I need to adapt this so the leaves are up there, and when I when it starts on fire, then I do these. But I was when I made this, I was thinking about putting the excuses on the flames. Uh -huh. But uh -huh. it starts on fire before the flames get there, so there's a, maybe a disconnect. But you can make your own. This pattern is on the website. It comes out this size. It comes out poster size, but if you're teaching a different age group, that's a lot of information. So you don't have to put words on here. You can make your own leaf, make your own leaf. Um, but even the, the bush is on there. The bush is not inspired. It's just, you know, what I drew. Kids don't care. You don't have to be an artist. I'm not an artist. Just put something out there. The kids will love it. Um, so it's this presented light, in love, huh? Could this idea be adapted to black light as well? Oh, I'm or sure it could. Work? That would be ideal. I just don't know how you would do the. That's what's true. You would have to outline it. Outline it, maybe a piece of, yeah, you just have to get uh, fluorescent markers, fluorescent paint, and do the outline. You can buy Again, they're paper. kids, they'll get it. Yeah. Brown, well, you could make your burning bush any color you want, I suppose. <laughs> but, or you could just make an outline of the bush, and then you add the leaves in a fluorescent green, and then you get the fluorescent. Yeah, that white look. does not fluoresce. Um, and white, so white does not, but so the painting around it, but, so it, but it, turn, it makes it look kind of a gray color. So uh -huh. you could just do white mm -hmm. and then it already looks dark when the fluorescent light is on there. You wouldn't have to do, I mean, if you wanted to outline it in a marker, but it would already look kind of, it would already look kind of dark. Yeah. Or you could just have a black piece of paper as your background. Yeah. I usually draw, draw, mm -hmm. draw don't wear a white shirt, but draw yeah, the outline and paint. fluorescent paint mm -hmm. and then add your fluorescent green leaves and, and what, I mean, you know, I, we're seeing the options here, but you don't have to have words on them. These, you don't have to have words. You could with, you could just put leaves, a whole bunch of leaves on there. And if you're teaching little ones and then just teach, teach the flames as the story, if you want to shorten it. So, Whatever you want to do, but the pattern is there. You can print it out in black and white, print it out on paper, whatever you want to do. Um, but when I'm teaching that, I always pick, this is a, I think it's just a bush from that part of the world. And then here's a, an actual bush that's on fire because what would that look like? I'm trying to grease the wheels. Kids know what fire is, but I'm trying to grease, they have that cog in place, mm -hmm. the, the wheels and the cogs, but I need to grease it a little bit. What would it actually look like if the bush was burning, burning? And all kids know that eventually it would burn up. So did Moses sit there and look at it for quite a while? Probably. He probably sat there and after a while he'd go, wait a minute. At, you know, 20, 30 minutes, maybe that should have burned up. I don't know how long he stared at it, but we know he's, he was engaged, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was really engaged. And thought, wait a minute, I gotta, I gotta go check out 
um, check that out. But wait, there's more. Review day. When the kids first come in class, um, ask them a question and have them find a flame, put it on here. Um, I've got the, whatever. <laughs> I can't do it standing up. I also have, and this is on my website, a, a learning center. This is just an enlarged thing that I took to uh, Office Max and did. This was the, this is what's on the, uh, what's on my website. This, I think this is my one I originally just drew. But again, these come off. You can do this with preschoolers. They don't need to read. You can lay this flat, have all the leaves over here, ask them a question. Oh, good job. You get to put the, you know, put the fire on. Who cares if it's in the right place? So you see how adaptable things are? Just because I focus on good readers with upper elementary doesn't mean you have to use it that way. You can do anything. Any story that you're teaching, if you're teaching about you know, Peter, James, and John in the sailboat, you're teaching about Jesus in the boat, make a boat, make a boat, and have the kids put the puzzle pieces back as kind of a review game or whatever. Um, all of these are put in pencil pouches and they're all self-checking. They do, a, these, this is what I have them do before class begins. And I've got a bunch of them on my website. Just print them out, use them. We have some of them, most of them have about 10 questions. Some of them we call early reader, but they're really just five questions instead of 10. But um, if you don't, if the kids aren't good readers, and children in first, second, and third grade are learning to read. In fourth grade, they begin reading to learn. So you need to understand that difference in the way God designed them. And I'm talking about the average typical child, okay? Um, make sure your class is designed around the average typical class and don't make your children in second grade read a paragraph and answer questions because they're gonna be so busy decoding the words that they might not get the con. Con the comprehension. So just be, be aware of how you use things. But all of these can be used before class or even after a lesson as a game. The kids can't read, make up your own questions. <laughs> if, you know, again, they don't care. It's, it's all right. So there's, there's that. You know um, that lady, you gave the website, I, I can't remember whose it is, but she always has those review sheets that have pictures for like first and second, K first and second. That I think is a Bible fun for kids. Bible fun for kids. I and think those, she has. Uh -huh. Those could be incorporated in there too because she's got, you know, just a couple, one at a time or whatever, how you want to do it. But she has done a magnificent job doing that for first and kindergarten so they don't have to be fluid readers and feel bad if they can't read. Right. They don't have to read every word. Notice in my songs, I have a lot of pictures instead of the words. Um, that was more of an artistic thing I wanted to do because I mean I initially didn't have enough room to write the words so I thought oh just throw a little mountain <laughs> but the kids pick up on it real quick um, so kids kids will pick up on anything quick if you give them if you give them half a chance um, so that's the burning bush there available in many variations do something besides a bush pick any object in your lesson and see is there something I can do with this is there something I can do with this? All right, oversized visuals. This, that's where I was going. So you see how this is on the wall there. I think we're through with that. Okay, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, a lot of my visual aids came about because I have a room that has three walls that has their acoustical tiles or ceiling tiles on them. So I've got ceiling to floor visual aids. I got tired of putting the paper up, so I finally just painted them. <laughs> one's lime green, one's dark blue, one's bright yellow, one's lavender or, or lilac or a, a medium purple. But that's dictated how I've done this because most people don't have big walls where you can do this. So in your packet, I gave you some small ones. I gave you some patterns. These are available on my website. And I'll, I'll tell you in a minute why I gave you the pattern. But let's talk about this one first of all. This is Pelon. So this is basic facts about Abraham. Just basic facts. He has three promises. Uh, the nation, he was also promised a son and that he would become a great nation. So there's four, but I just focus on these three. Now, what 
Well, how are all people blessed? How are all people blessed? What do you see there? What shape do you see? A cross. A, cross. Mm -hmm. a, a subtle visual reminder. Um, all are blessed through Jesus. So he's got three fingers over here. That reminds us of the three promises. He's got Ishmael and Isaac, um, Sarah and Abraham. We, we go left to right on, on all of these characters. I have more of these characters. Uh, but this was Pelon. You just use a marker and you go down like that. <laughs> you go down like that. And these were marks a lot markers. But you after, can color Pelon with chalk faster than. But how would it wear? Let's spray it. Let's spray it. it. With spray, spray. Spray. Uh, the mm -hmm. cheapest aquanet you can buy, and they'll stay a good while. I did several, we roll them up. Okay, I've never done the chalk, I've, I've heard of it, but I just have never done it. Mm -hmm. This is the old way we did it. Well, okay. it's a lot faster than trying to do magic marker because oh, okay. it's very absorbent. Yes, it is. Um, okay, so I've got Abraham, and then Isaac, his son. Uh, his name's Isaac. His wife is Rebecca. You see his feet. He saw in Jacob. And look, notice how he's looking down. He's looking down at when he was nearly sacrificed. Then we go over to Jacob. Uh, from left to right, we have his first wife, Leah. Uriah, his second wife, Rachel. Uh, and then we have the concubines on the cuffs. Jacob, there's his family tree, and he had seven. See, his eyes are looking to the left, and he's looking at all of his sons. So, what else can you do with this? This is literally basic shapes. Art, in its most basic form, is shapes that are manipulated. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of other ideas. Here's a guy. I, I call these, your, this is your life posters. Are you guys familiar with these? Um, Hot bowls. Yeah, yeah, these these little things here. If you don't have, I don't have much room here, but you'll you'll get the point. Um, you can stick them on there with plastic tag. Stick them on here. This is your life. So these are this is your life characters. Mm -hmm. So um, I just put them on, on the wall in my room. But here we have who's who's this guy? He's 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 shouting out. Hear the word of God. He is a prophet. He is supposed to go to Nineveh. Oops, here's a ship, and oh, Jonah Jones. is going into his mouth. Here's some seaweed. We got some <laughs> various stuff. Um, so as you're teaching it, you leave these up in your room somewhere. Um, we've got Moses. He was in Egypt. Here is the tenth plague, the burning bush, this at Mount Sinai, Golden Bath. <laughs> Oh my, the water's parted. <laughs> because why not? Oh, looky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hmm, what does that stand for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Miriam and Aaron, they were important in his life, and so on. Here's here's one on Esther. Um, she was a friend. Uh, Mordecai was a friend. Haman was a foe. Whoops, something happened to him. So we have a map, we have uh, her, how beautiful she was, the right place, the right time. All right, do you use that as a review or as you Yeah, this is a review. When okay. you're studying a character, uh -huh. I have these up uh -huh. and we're constantly reviewing. Okay, what did we talk about last time? Depending yeah. on where we are. Then you can put anything on these. You put, you put, put anything. Here's, here's Paul, he was an apostle. Um, in Tarsus, he's from Tarsus. Here, he didn't want Christians. These are all the books he wrote. Uh, what's the number 14 about? Think of Paul and the number 14. How many apostles were there? There were 12. And one no, apostle. there were not 12. No. There were 14. 14 <laughs> <laughs> Judah, Judas was no more, but they replaced him. And then, um, yeah, so there's, there's 14 apostles. That's, that's like asking a child how many days it take God to create the world. Seven. No. Oh, <laughs> six. six. You know, you're not going to go to heaven or hell if you don't know that. But <laughs> More like that. Pairs of animals that people teach incorrectly on. Uh, no one. Yeah. Instead of teaching them correctly. clean animals went into the seven pairs. Two pair of unclean. One pair of them. One pair of unclean. And seven, seven pairs of clean animals. animals. Yeah. Otherwise, if 
if uh, he had sacrificed the only male sheep to go with the female sheep, we wouldn't have sheep. <laughs> yeah. So here's his name, Saul. Here's Paul. Here's this. That here's his so name. I love um, this name. It's my precious. blue. I, it just, I don't know what he did. Um, but this is just, I don't know. Anyway, oh, we could go on and on. Um, who's this? Here's, that should be 32,000 dots over oh, here. And 300 oh, dots over here. Oh, my. Oh, look, he's peeking out of the wine vat. <laughs> God hates Midian. I should have reverse this so God defeats me and would be shouted out. Look, does that look familiar? That's the same image yeah, I use. Yes, All right, there's police. Mm -hmm. So I mean have fun. Mm -hmm. Have fun. You can do this for any character. Um let the kids help you make one. You don't have to do it all. Let them help you make one or let them make their own. What you can do with these patterns is just trace the outlines. Trace the outlines, take away all of the writing in there and then just use them. And I just got a, a, a girl face for her, just drew a, a girl face for her. Um, but again, possibilities are are, un, are unlimited with what you can do. And I lost my notes. Here they are, I think. Mr. High Priest back there. He was, you know, small. Um, and again, I, I used an overhead transparency and enlarged him. He has been remade in part. I made the the apron out of paper that was then laminated. We see we're missing a few things, but he's really old, probably 30 years old, but he was all pale on. He's kind of been replaced. Um, a friend fixed that for me. She could redo everything except the apron. That's why we still have the apron. Um, but we had to mount them on something because they were starting to fall apart. But again, if you make something once and you make it right, you don't have to do it again, do you? Why are we constantly creating more work for ourselves? Why don't we make good materials and keep them, make them to the best of our ability? That being said, you don't have to make things that are perfect. I've got a lot of things that are imperfect. And you know what? The kids don't care. They really don't care. Now, there's a difference between somebody being something being imperfect and something being kind of torn and maybe stained and uncared for. There's a difference there. Doing your best, the kids will absolutely love it. Look at the stuff kids make. Look at the stuff they make. It's not perfect, is it? And yet we love it. We tell them we love it uh, because we, we love them. All right, there were a couple of things we've got about seven, a couple of things we didn't get to do in our last session, I believe we covered. Anybody have any questions about these things before we go back and play a little bit of catch up? Okay. All right. The dots, you see over here, you see these pages that look like, they look like dashes. But if you look close up, there's tiny little dots. Do you see all those little dots? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a thousand dots, and this is a thousand dots. Um, so how many dots are on each page? I have 16 pages. We go out in the hall, I've got a big hallway, and these are laminated, so I just kind of slide them out and just go flying all over. I ask the kids, fourth and fifth graders, to count how many dots there are all together. We talk to them. Well, there's 32,000 dots. Okay, I say, take away, oh, see, I can even really look at them. Take away 22,000 of them for me. So they take away 22,000. How many do we have left? We have 10,000 left. Hmm, we need to take some more away. Take away, let's take away 9,700 of them. How many do we have? This, this takes a while. <laughs> it takes a little bit, so you have to plan your class accordingly. We end up taking a marker, Sharpie, and we circle 300. I'm not counting exactly, but oh, there's 300 dots. We went from 32,000 down to 300. Was 32,000 a lot? Yeah, they're up close. They're looking at all these dots. Well, of course, does anybody know what story I'm introducing? Yeah, what am I? yeah Gideon's three, 300. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But um, this is one of those things where I'm prepping their mind to understand what we're talking about. What is the difference between 32,000 all the way down to 300? So they've gotten to experience that now. So that's what. Why in the world did you get all the dots? <laughs> Internet. Uh, internet. You can find anything on the internet. Well, evidently. <laughs> I literally searched a thousand dots or something. Mm -hmm. Just just play around with it. You have to spend time with this stuff. This stuff doesn't happen 
just magically. Okay, you gotta spend time on this. I happen to enjoy doing this. I, my kids are grown. Um, I have time to do this kind of thing. One thing over here I didn't show you when we were talking about the tabernacle is I hang, um, I, I got some fabrics. Um, I got a scarlet co color fabric and a, a purple and a blue, and then I have this gold thing that um, has gold threads in it because <laughs> it kind of looks like it does. And I put that on the wall when we're talking about the tabernacle because I want them to understand. And I drape all this jewel, costume jewelry all over it. So that, that's what they collected for the tabernacle. Here is an animal skin. Last summer, as we were going over, um, I forget what, oh, we were talking about the Bible and how the Bible was written on animal skins as one of the things. So I, I just, it hit me right in the middle of class. I wonder what it's like to write on this. So we wrote on it. <laughs> we wrote Yahweh, Y-H-W-H. And it, it was so easy. It was so easy to, to, to just write on it. So we got to experience together what the scribes would have done. They got to write on an animal skin. Of course, this is what Adam and Eve were clothed with. I just bought, a, went to... <laughs> The store and got a piece of leather from a fabric store. It was about seven dollars or something. It wasn't expensive, but when you're talking about people that were dressed in skins, can a child grasp that? Besides, feel. I'm, I'll pass this around. I want you to feel how comfortable this is. Um, you could actually. That would actually be comfortable. They need to know what an animal skin is. So make sure they know. How uh -huh. long ago did you buy that? Like yeah. 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. It's leather. It'll last for all oh, that's like seven dollars. <laughs> yeah, never mind. <laughs> no, I just wondered if they still sold them. Well. Yes. Oh yes. yeah, they do. Oh, yeah. You get your Joanne's 40% off. And I think I got that at Joanne. I think it was at Joanne, but I don't know if they have it anymore. Online. Pieces of it. Huh? Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can find pieces of it. Mm -hmm. if you I like that one stuff. because it probably, it may have come off a deer. It looks like maybe, yeah. I don't know, the size of a deer or a small calf. I don't know what it is. But it's something that the kids can, we're giving them a, a cog in their wheel. Because they understand animal skin, but they also need to understand fleece. Mm -hmm. So make sure you get a, a fleece and then you can show them, uh, you know. The reverse side of the system. Let them touch it, let them feel it, but not if they're allergic to cats and dogs because my granddaughter, I had just laying on the floor, my granddaughter, when she was in my class, she came in and sat on it. She goes, Oh, this is so, this is so wonderful. You know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was terrible. So my hair with those animal allergies, really. I have fake fur. I have a fake fur that looks really, really good. It was a blanket. I got it at Goodwill for five dollars. But it looks really real. So now I bring it's that one really like, in addition to the real one. Mm -hmm. Because there are I just can't yeah. store them together. Mm -hmm. Because if you store yeah, you just that, can't yeah. store them. Just set it on the table. It'll be fine. <laughs> All right, squares are cool. This was written way back when the word is square. Remember back in the 60s or 50s, mm -hmm. such a square. <laughs> um, um, squares are cool. Okay. I got to get my, see my stuff is written on the back. I, I usually do these backwards. I load them the other way. All right. Here are the squares. They live all by themselves in square town. Here are the circles. They live all by themselves in the circle, in circle town. Triangles, the same thing. I'm going to shorten this a little. Uh, rectangles the same. The squares do not like the circles and the circles do not like the squares. The triangles do not like the rectangles and the rectangles do not like anyone but themselves. The squares say if you want to be smart and beautiful and good you must have four sides exactly the same. If you don't have four sides exactly the same well, we don't want to play with you because we don't like you. The circles say, if you want to be smart and beautiful good, you must be perfectly round. If you're not perfectly round, we don't want to play with you. Or we don't like you. So sorry. Triangles, same thing. Same, same exact phrasing. One beautiful summer day, the little squares and the little circles and the little rectangles and the little triangles went outside to play, but not together. While they were playing, a terrible thing happened. The circles were playing on top of the hill. 
some of us, some of them slipped and went rolling down, down, down the hill. Faster and faster and faster they rolled until they reached the bottom where the little rectangles were playing. The rectangles got very, very mad at the circles because they rolled right into the rectangles play area. They call the circles bad names and threw rocks at them. <gasps> Do we throw rocks? Never. The circles were very scared. Squares and the triangles heard all the yelling and crying, so they ran as fast as they could to see what was going on. When they got there, they joined in the ruckus by also yelling and throwing rocks. Oh, that's terrible. Really, you know, we really need to, this is part of the story, but we need to react strongly against that. It was just awful. Now there was more noise and even more crying. Can you imagine? All of a sudden, one of the rectangles became so mad that he jumped into the air and came down right on top of the circle. Oh, wonder of wonders. Everyone stopped moving. Everyone was surprised. Everyone stopped yelling and crying. No one said a word. They just looked and they looked and they looked. The rectangles and circles together had made a lovely and beautiful wagon. Everyone became excited. You're not supposed to see these. <laughs> everyone, wanted to, everyone wanted to make something interesting. So the squares and circles made a train and a rectangle made a smokestack. The triangles and rectangles made a flower and they all played together for a very long time. They all made fun and interesting objects. They wanted to make even more fun. So they made even more fun objects and they kept doing it over and over and over. You know how kids are. <laughs> they were having such a fun time playing together that they forgot how different they were. They thought that being different was much better than being the same. In fact, they had so much fun together that they decided to do it again tomorrow. At long last, it was time to go home for supper. As they were leaving their new friends, they all said over and over and over, we are glad, glad, glad being different is not bad. <laughs> and then um, just kind of an application of scripture. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all. God richly blesses all who call upon them. Of course, we're going to talk about that in a little more detail. This is a lesson on prejudice. Right? What lessons can we use this with? What lessons are there in the Bible? The sheep that comes down with our knees. The what? The sheep. Oh, the yeah. Oh, the when, the, when God told Peter that the Gentiles were going to be included. I hadn't thought of that one. Mm -hmm. um, Jonah. Jonah was incredibly prejudiced. The, he hated the, the people of Nineveh, the Samaritan woman whom Jesus said. Yes, there's the story of the good Samaritan. Samaritan. Mm -hmm. So any of these stories, you can even, um, this, I usually take longer going through this with the kids. And sometimes, you know, they want to talk and point, and that's okay, because we want to let the kids talk some, right? We are still in control. Um, you can even split this. You can do part of it. And then stop. Oh, wonder of wonders. You know, they, they, that, that one where the rectangle jumped on top of the circle, mm -hmm. you could stop right there. And then you go do something else. Story and gave the kids the colored blocks, either from the wood, they could do the story <coughs> monetarily with you. As you're teaching. Wonderful idea. One or after it, mm -hmm. you can ask, especially the younger kids, you can let them, what can you make with some of these shapes? Uh, Legos or foam blocks or whatever. Yeah, that's a good idea. Um, we want them to carry not just the story, but the meaning behind the story. Um, the younger the child, um, starting fourth grade, fifth grade, and especially by sixth grade, the children um, are able to think ab abstractly. Lower elementary, they're very concrete thinkers. So sometimes these, these analogies, these applications we make, they have to be age appropriate. And so we have to think about that and our time is up.